the video. This is the brilliant one? Wow, no. Absolutely not. Clearly not for me. I have probably pissed off every single person watching this video. Books that are not worth the hype. This video is part one of two. In part two, I will talk about books that are worth the hype. It's not all negativity around here all the time. I thought we'd start negative and end positive. So today is books that I feel were not worth the hype. This is of course a reflection of my personal opinions, tastes, and feelings. This is not universal. I do often like to say that it is because I feel in my heart that it is. I do not promise that I won't use words such as this is objectively bad, but you know, these are my thoughts and, and feelings. So this also, this list is in no particular order. So I'm not going from like worst to best or best to worst or anything like that. And this is by no means uh, an exhaustive list. This is not every hyped book that I feel is not worth the hype. There are certainly many hyped books that I disliked that are not on this list. These are 10 books that most came to mind when I wanted to put together a list of books that I were that I felt were not worth the hype. <laughs> so number one is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. If you're new to my channel, uh, it's been actually a little while now since I took down the video. If you don't know this, the entire reason that I started a Patreon was because of my two Sanderson videos. They were getting so much hate. And um, I was like joking with friends, and I think one of my friends suggested it, that basically to put a paywall up to make those videos patron-only videos so that if you wanted to come and yell at me, you'd have to pay for the privilege. And that's why I started a Patreon. <laughs> so if, yeah, if you've never seen those videos, the only way to see them now is to be a patron. The Way of Kings, uh, like I said, if you're new to my channel, then you may genuinely not know about my infamous hot take that The Way of Kings sucks. Um, although I feel that people have brought it up enough to where it's in a common collective memory at this point. It's one of my most famous hot takes. Yeah, I thought Way of Kings sucked. And over the years, um, there's been many a time when I, I've had so much FOMO because like, man, the Sanderson fandom, they are, they are mighty. And anytime Sanderson does anything, they are there for him. Um, it's it's kind of cool to see. And it makes me always go, oh, I wish I could be a part of that. And it makes me go, maybe I should, maybe I should give it another chance. Maybe I should try to read Words of Radiance. But then I remember about all the stuff that was in Way of Kings that I thought was so dumb. And I'm like, there's just no way that any of that's gonna be any different in the rest of the series. So yeah, no, I I do not understand why people like Way of Kings. Even if the next one is better, which most people say that it is, I, like I said, I'm fairly certain and I also believe people have confirmed for me when I've asked that the things that I am aggravated by are not fixed. <laughs> so it's like, pacing better, um, things like that, or I guess maybe character development is better or something like that. But like, it's like world building stuff, which is supposed to be Brandon Sanderson's big claim to fame. Like he's the world building guy. I think his world building genuinely sucks. I think it's so bad. And it just baffles me that people think it's brilliant. I read Mistborn and I thought the world building was like pretty cool. I quite liked the world building in Mistborn. And people were like, Mistborn, you ain't seen nothing yet. His true, like the pinnacle of what Brandon Sanderson can do is the Stormlight Archive. So I was like, all right, let's go. And I read The Way of Kings and I was like, what? This is the brilliant one? This is the one that's the end all and be all of fantasy world building? I have so many questions and problems and criticisms. Like I, my video was like an hour long. Admittedly, it was an hour long because a lot of it was me just kind of like being frustrated. So it's not a straight hour of listing points. I'm not gonna claim that. But there were so many things that I thought were badly done, made no sense, were not coherent, did not make sense when combined with other things, were just baffling decisions. And then I also thought it was paced terribly. I thought the characterization was like pretty poor. There was just like no upside. Like I couldn't, reading it, I wasn't like, well, this isn't my cup of tea, but like I get what it is that people are getting out of this. Genuinely years, years later, someone finally explained to me at least for them, what they were getting out of it. And I finally kind of understood what, what someone might be getting out of it. That is definitely not something I would ever get out of it. And it's like the way that he makes certain parts of his magic be kind of like a reflection of real world, like principles in physics or something like that. And my dad loves the Stormlight Archive. He didn't pass that gene on to me. And he's a, he was an aerospace engineer. So if that's what he's getting out of it, I kind of understand. And if that's what people are getting out of it, like I, I kind of understand, but I also just feel like the average person is not gonna pick up on that or be aware of that. So like truly I can't say that I understand know why people like it because I don't think people are getting, you know, physics out of the Stormlight Archive. Maybe they are, maybe I'm wrong, but 
world building and characterization and pacing and storytelling, like, all atrocious, in my opinion. Um, clearly not the majority opinion. And I, to this day, do not understand what people are getting out of this. So yeah, definitely not worth the hype. You know how I said the Sanderson fandom does show up for Sanderson? Well, my camera overheated conveniently uh, just after I finished talking about Sanderson. So they were too late to stop me, but. We're back in business now, and I'm ready to talk about the next book on my list, which is The Forgetting Moon by Brian Lee Durfee. Uh, this book is not, I wouldn't say, like, widely hyped, like, in the greater book reading universe, but in my corner of booktube, the fan the adult fantasy corner of booktube, it's quite hyped. And a lot of uh, creators that I respect, admire, follow, uh, regard as friends, all love The Forgetting Moon and generally the Five Warrior Angels series. Because of that, because of how much they love it, even though I was not liking the first book really at all, I was like, well, they all seem to love it. There's got to be a reason. So I like gave it a hopeful three stars, hoping slash expecting that the second book in the series would would justify that, would reward the, the faith I had placed in it. And oh boy, that series well, I have not and will not read the third book, but the first two of the three books are just everything that I hate. <laughs> the characterization was terrible, the world building was not very good, and the way it was delivered was through infodemps and expository dialogue. The themes and like the message of the book was delivered in the most ham-fisted, aggressive, here's the message guys way that beggared belief in terms of like what's going on in the story, the way characters stop the story to tell you the message. And also it's just insulting to me as a reader. I'm like, yes, your message is so painfully obvious just in the way you're telling this story. And then you also have characters stop and tell me the message because you were afraid I still didn't get it. Like, sir, sir, we get it. It's not a very original message. It's not a very clever message. It's not a brilliantly nuanced message. It's, um, it's just, <laughs> it's not, it's not good. And it, it has the tone of like the author being like, I have, it's like, um, like a kid that's gone to college and taken, you know, intro to philosophy and come home for Christmas break. And is like, I have some deep thoughts that no one has ever had before. Let me tell you the, let me share my wisdom with you. And it's like, these are not deep thoughts. Um, or at least they're not very original thoughts. Like, I'm glad you're discovering these thoughts, but this isn't new. This isn't groundbreaking. You're not really doing anything here. And then the handling of women was just egregious, offensive, and just bad. Where again, it's like there were these moments where I was like, I think you think you're being feminist and oh boy, you are not. <laughs> so just, just yikes, basically. Just yikes. Wow. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Next up I have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, I believe. I would not have picked this up. I kind of feel bad putting it on this list because like I tried in making this list to not put books that are like just so absolutely not my kind of thing to where like there was just never a chance that I was gonna like it. For example, like Ice Planet Barbarians, if you're expecting to see it on this list. Wait, did I put it on the list? No, I didn't put it on the list. And that was why I thought about it, but I was like, cause it's really hyped and I hated it. But also like I wouldn't have read it if I hadn't been made to read it because I knew that I wouldn't like it. And that's just kind of not fair because I don't do that. I don't pick up books that I think I'm going to hate on purpose just to rant about them. People seem to think that I do that and I really don't. If I'm reading a book and I'm choosing to read it, it's because I hope and expect to like it. If I'm reading a book with the expectation of hating it, it's because someone's making me do it, like for a book club or something like that. But anyway, um, back to the book I'm actually <laughs> here to talk about, uh, even though it does kind of fall into this category. So Legends and Lattes, it's cozy fantasy, which is like the new the new buzzword. And that's just like not a thing that I'm interested in at all whatsoever. If you tell me that a book is a cozy fantasy book, I'm like, yeah, no, no, thank you. Not for me. My patrons chose it for me to read and vlog. So, so I did. I was like, I'm not gonna like it. And I didn't. But I, I mean, I didn't go into it being like determined to hate it. I was like, I mean, I hope I like it. I don't want to spend time reading a book that I hate. Um, that, that's not a good time. So I was like, hopefully I get something out of it. Maybe, you know, even if it's not my cup of tea, I'll find something, you know, charming about it or whatever. And I just didn't. It was just the most boring and unamusing waste of my time. I truly do not understand what people are getting out of this. I'm told people find it, like, do find it funny and that they do really like the characters and that they really enjoy reading about cinnamon rolls. I don't like sweets and I don't like saccharine stories. And I don't think it was like 
sweetly cute and like, oh, so cute. Like, I didn't think it was that cute, really. And I definitely didn't think it was funny. Like, the humor in it was definitely not my, my humor. I was just so... I cannot overstate how bored I was. <laughs> I truly was like, what is the point of this? I, I do not understand. Um, if I meant to like feel good reading this, I do not. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, my comfort character is Sandan Glockta. Um, so this is why I would not choose to read that. But like, I have read books that like, I mean, I always talk about liking Radiance by Grace Draven, which is a romance book. And I don't typically read romance, but I really like the characters. And that's how I always describe rereading it is like, I just like hanging out with Brish and Anil Deco. Like I just like spending time with those characters. And that I can almost like kind of feel like, oh, that's just like cozy to me. Like just being with them and like, I like their humor and I like their dynamic and just being around them as I read it is pleasant. So like, if that's what people mean, with with Legends of Lattes, like I guess I understand that as a concept, but I don't get how you're getting that out of this book because it was just so boring. Like these are not characters like I wish I could meet. Like these are characters that are like I would have polite conversations with at work over the water cooler because because you do that because they are in your proximity, but I would have no desire to have any more than polite conversation as needed when necessary to coexist in an office. Like, you're like so boring, so uninteresting, so unamusing. I, w I don't understand <laughs> what people are getting out of it. I don't. Cinnamon rolls, like, if that's truly what you're getting out of this, like, just, just watch some recipe videos. <laughs> uh, number four is an oldie, <laughs> Trader's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. One of, uh, not my first rant review, but it's an early rant review on my channel. I was reminded recently of it because uh, someone commented on it, which like people do comment on like old videos from time to time. And usually it's not a comment that makes me like want to go back and look at that video. Uh, Cause it's usually like, oh, good point. Thanks for the video. Or like, I don't know, something like that. And I'm just like, cool. But they said something in my, in the comments of the, of that video that made me go, what did I say in that video? It's been so long. <laughs> like, I don't even remember. So I did rewatch my own video to be like, what did I say about this book? And I was reminded of how horrible that book is. <laughs> oh, that book is so dumb. <laughs> so like a lot of the stuff in it that happens that's really, really dumb is quite spoilery. And I'm not here to spoil books, even if I don't think you should read them. So if you want to hear um, my full spoilery ranty thoughts about it, it. Um, there is that old video of mine. Um, I can't vouch for like the video quality and the editing quality. It's, it's old. Oh my god. I forgot how stupid that book was. <laughs> like I remembered that I didn't like it but the specifics I had forgotten about and as I was like re-watching my video I was like oh yeah I forgot about that. That book was so bad. Oh and it's so bizarre too and it's so gross and so it's gross because like these are like characters painted as being virtuous and they do some pretty icky things and but like the the weird stupid parts i cannot overstate how bizarre those choices are while also being off-putting it's just the, one of the most baffling reading experiences i've ever had i i don't understand the the mindset of the author in in writing that book like what were you thinking sir did did your editor never stop and go are you, sh are you sure you sure about that? I kind of recommend looking up spoilers if you haven't read it, because like, I, I cut, trigger warnings, probably, I think. Yeah, I don't think that's overstating it. It's like, oh, it's like everything that you shouldn't do in a book, it does. It's like it, it, it had been challenged to do, to write a book where you break every rule of like what you're supposed to do in a book. It's kind of impressive. Yeah, I, I, I've heard the rest of the series is better, but I was not gonna give it a chance after that first installment, because... I owe it nothing. Number five is uh, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. There is a live show with me and Alex from last Halloween where uh, I wore the obligatory lip black lipstick. Alex did not. We did have um, a good time chatting about that book. Reading it, no. I mean, Alex didn't even finish it. He, he DNF'd it. I read the whole thing and it was 800 pages of nonsense. The way I described it um, in that live chat in my worst books of the year video, wherever else I've talked about it, um, is that it's like the misogyny and homophobia met up at Hot Topic. It's just the most ridiculous, offensive, over the top edgelord BS that I've ever read. I just, oh, it's, it's once again kind of baffling. And it's also baffling to me how many people love it. I don't understand how like people, are like, this is Jay Kristoff's best book yet. I'm like, how? I, I, I truly do not understand. 
like that that book is a joke and like not on purpose like it's it's like I'm laughing at it not with it and I'm still to this day traumatized by the number of times it used the expression truth be told or if truth were told or to speak truth literally to this day when books do this I flinch because it did it so many times in Empire of the Vampire that it I can't I can't handle that phrase anymore it's a perfectly valid phrase I cannot hear it anymore and if I find myself saying it I also flinch like oh it's it's not good guys it's not good. It's very violent. It's very graphic. It's very, again, misogynistic. The world building is stupid. The narrative device of the character telling his own story is just, that's already a format that like kind of beggars belief. Um, you have to have quite an immense amount of going with itness to have that be the sort of like framing device. But this person is under duress, does not wish to be sharing his own story. But nevertheless, he shares his own story in the most elaborate, time skippy, jumpy, um, detailed 800 page telling. And, and we keep checking in with the present day of him being like, I'm gonna tell my own story in my own way if I have to tell it at all. And it's like, stop reminding me that this is the premise because that's so unbelievable. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so check out the live show with Alex if you're interested. It was again, it was a uh, spoilery. So if you're worried about that, uh, then don't, but I don't recommend reading the book, so wouldn't worry about it. Uh, next is a book um, which I uh, probably shouldn't put on the list for the same reason that I was talking about for like, uh, um, oh, what's it called? Ice Planet Barbarians, but From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Because again, like, I probably wouldn't have picked this. Although I can't say that I would never have read it. Like, I might have been curious to read it because like, I read and enjoyed The Cruel Prince. Um, I read and enjoyed Shatter Me. So it's so hyped that like I might have been curious to pick it up because it's a fantasy book um, even though like romance is clearly central to it. So it was so hyped. I, I might have picked it up. I'm not going to say that that would not have happened at all. Probably wouldn't have finished it though if it hadn't been a book club pick. That was also a situation where the world building and character development is just like non-existent. What is there is bad and offensive and very questionable and really cringe and I was told that oh well even though this is like a swords and sorcery like old olden day kind of fantasy um that the the reason it feels so like weirdly modern is because the author typically before writing that had written urban fantasy and I was like that makes zero difference that's fine that she wrote urban fantasy before that's not what this is. So if you're not willing to adjust your style to this other kind of a story then don't write a different kind of story. Like if Ken Follett suddenly decided to write like a present day story, but everyone talked like they were in the olden days, you wouldn't be like, well, he typically writes historical fiction. That's why everyone talks in this completely unnatural way. You'd be like, no, if you've decided to write a story in the modern day, then you need to change what you've typically done. Those, that, I'm not, I'm sorry, that's just how it works. Like you can't be like, well, I usually write this other thing. So I'm just not gonna try to be good at writing this other type of thing. I'm just gonna do what I always do. Like, wh what? <laughs> How How is that a valid explanation for why it is the way that it is? I I do not understand. I don't know what is appealing about the story or the characters or the fantasy of it. I don't understand what's appealing about the romance of it. It's just so long and cringy. It's clearly not for me. Number seven, I have Babel by R.F. Guang. I have a very long review of this book, which I'll leave linked down below if you're interested, where I went in depth unpacking and analyzing it from multiple perspectives. I've been kind of like jokey throughout this video. That's kind of the fun of this kind of video. But with Babel, like I don't even really want to joke because like I, it, it hurt me that I hated it. I wanted to like it and it remains a project that like a book that has that as its project is something that I vastly approve of and would want to love like the product that is the result of this project. And the fact that it was executed in my opinion so badly really like hurts and bothers me because I think it's a very worthy project. And it, it was very easy to identify so many things that could be fixed about it to not make it perfect, but like to immediately improve it. It wasn't fun to rant about that book. It was very upsetting how bad it was. And I had kind of had a suspicion that I would feel that way 
about it. I, I had very much hoped to be wrong about that. But to find that it was even worse than I thought it would be was genuinely painful. And the way that people talk about it being so, 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 so brilliant is also concerning to me because like, if people think that that is the best version of that, I just, I guess I can never hope for a genuinely good version of that because people think that what we got was brilliant and it wasn't. <laughs> so I don't know what to tell ya, but th th that wasn't it. Uh, next I have The Shadow What Was Lost by S the Islington? Islington? Islington. First name escapes me. I have that on my watch to read for ages and ages, mostly because of the cover. Very orange cover. We love an orange cover. And, you know, a chunky adventure fantasy book. Like, it looked like very traditional fantasy. I think it was, um, it like came into my awareness or was on my radar around the same time that I picked up Dawn of Wonder by, um, don't remember the author's name. <laughs> Dawn of Wonder, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Uh, that's a self-published book. It is really good. And Dawn of Wonder was kind of being shown to me at the same time on Amazon as Shadow of What Was Lost. And so like, because that was like linked in my mind, then I kind of expected Shadow of What Was Lost to be like that. And in, in some respects it is because like, it is a traditional fantasy. There is like questing and chosen ones and like, it feels very familiar in that sense. So yes, I guess, like I would, <laughs> I would say if you like Shadow of What Was Lost, you'd probably like Dawn of Wonder. But if you like Dawn of Wonder, you wouldn't necessarily like Shadow of What Was Lost because I love Dawn of Wonder and I did not like Shadow of What Was Lost. Because like Dawn of Wonder is like the Rothfuss version where it's like beautifully told and emotionally told and very like character driven and character centric. And Shadow of What Was Lost was more like Wheel of Time, which there's a lot of people that like that, but I don't. <laughs> because it's not that way. The prose isn't very good. The characterization isn't very good. Um, so then, like with something like Rothfuss or Dawn of Wonder, the fact of the world being fairly derivative and kind of cookie cutter and just very traditional fantasy, not groundbreaking in any way, doesn't really bother me when I'm so engrossed in the characters and the story. And I feel that that is being told so well that I'm like, okay, well, the, the world is like, it's whatever, it's a fantasy world. But I'm, I'm so here for this story and these characters that it's taking place in it. But when it's like the shadow of what was lost and everything is like paint by number, including the characters and their conversations and the prose is like just, just barely serviceable, that's just not gonna work for me. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not my cup of tea, especially when it's so freaking long because it's not giving me anything that's like, if you're not gonna wow me with your prose or your character work, then I better be really impressed with your world building and I definitely wasn't, so. I kind of get why that's hyped because like, I, oh, I, get, well, I don't understand why people like Wheel of Time, but they do. And because they do, then I get why Shadow of What Was Lost would also work for you. Because people are liking these things that I do not like. <laughs> But if you like the one, I can see why you'd like the other. In a similar vein, number nine is Malice by John Gwynn. Pretty much just like copy paste what I just said. Because people love Malice. Uh, the way they talk about The Faithful and The Fallen, I was so hyped. I bought all four books before reading it and then read Malice and was like, nope, and got rid of all four. It also felt very like derivative and cringy. The character work was not good. People say that what they love about that series is the characters, which is like were, why I decided there was no point in reading on. Because if it was like, yeah, if people said that it's the character work isn't what's great about the series, there's something else about it, I'd be like, well, okay, maybe read and find out. But if they're like, oh, yeah, the weaknesses you cite, like those are, that's true, but it's the characters. And I'm like, no, no, the characters are not good. They're not well written. They're not fully fleshed out. They feel so derivative and or like plot conveniency and the dialogue was so bad and there was so many of them and I couldn't tell any of them apart and the plot the way it, it was just felt so amateurish. So incredibly amateurish and not in a way that's hopeful. Not in a way that's like, this is a little rough, but I see the potential. It was just rough. And the way people praise it where they're like, oh, it's a little slow to start, but once you get into it, I was like, no, at no point was I into it. So yeah, I, I don't get it. I really don't. And lastly is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, which is a book that started out strong. When I first started reading it, like the first couple chapters, I was like, I think this is gonna be a new favorite. And then it took me like two years to finish it. Uh, 
yeah, I, did, I don't like that. I have an old review of that as well. <laughs> um, it's for a while, I think that was like a darling of book. I haven't seen people talk about it recently, partly because, you know, the books all came out already. So it, people were talking about it as it was coming out. Um, but yeah, I never read past the first book. It also felt very much like a dude writing a fantasy book where like he thinks he's being super feminist. And it's like, just because there's a bunch of women in this story doesn't mean you're being feminist. That's not what that means. <laughs> it was, yeah. It's, it's a little hard to explain because it's a little more nuanced. It wasn't so like immediately and obviously bad. It wasn't like Malice <laughs> or To the Forgetting Moon. Like I think the prose is pretty good and I think the world building is decently interesting, which is why at first I was like, I think I'm going to be into this. It quickly fizzled and the plot seemed to go nowhere and the main character became not just, it's okay if your main character is unlikable, but unlikable in a way that felt very like not necessarily intended by by the author. It's it's unlikable in a way that like the way that they're structuring the character and the way they're having the character respond to things in the world and like what it is where they're expecting you to buy into this that's just like not working at all. So it's like very hard to to root for or sympathize or understand or even be interested in the main character. Um, and then a lot of stuff like kind of like building off of that and uh, the world building started to feel less and less impressive and, and less and less logical as we went. And I just was less and less impressed with it. And I was getting really bored with it and not loving the women, how they were being handled by this male author. Yeah. So in the end, when people were like, oh, this is such a good series. I was like, no, it's not though. <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe books two and three are like are really amazing. But when I talked to people, like the people who loved the series liked the first book as well and didn't really have my problems with it. So once again, I really don't get it, but I'm glad I'm really happy for y'all. If you love those books, you know. Nothing I say can really diminish your joy in them, which is um pretty much what I have to say about all these books. I have probably pissed off every single person watching this video. It's unlikely that you watched this and there wasn't at least one book here that you like, so I'm sorry. But again, just because I hate it doesn't mean you like it any less, so really it doesn't affect you at all. I hope you found this interesting or entertaining or helpful or something, but whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but nothing Saturdays. Like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.